agenda item uh, number three, uh, I mean, uh, number four, VA 2014-07, which I believe the probably a large part of the audience are here to uh, discuss or hear about. Uh, please remember that we are a recommending body only and that the final um, action on these cases will be held on Thursday, September 11th by the city and the city of Alaska and Mayor's Council. Um, we will extend the 10 minutes that I spoke about earlier. We will extend that to about 15 minutes for each side. Um, please make sure that you keep all comments proper um, and polite and to the point. Staff, if you will please present this case. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a rezoning request by Turner Burks LLC, requesting the rezoning of eight parcels um, that total almost four acres, but to rezone them to RM, which stands for multifamily. Um, zoning map on the screen and also in your packet shows that these eight parcels are split zone. Um, some of them are zoned single family R10, which is all four of them that face Pine Tree uh, Road to the north, and then one of the parcels on Bay Tree. The balance of the property um, is all currently zoned OP, which is office professional. Um, the use of the property is mixed into single family on the Pine Tree side. It is a mixture of fraternal organizations. Um, one of them being vacant um, on the property facing Bay Tree. Um, in your map, there is a ton of information. Um, we have added to that information even as of this afternoon. The staff has been receiving multiple items from concerned citizens and others um, throughout the weekend and even today. I've tried to keep up with that and forwarding some to you. Um, some I've given to you in the form of handouts, um, and we will walk through those when we come to them. But some basic information about the property, comprehensive plans, future development map, uses character areas. In your packet, there is a copy of this map. It, uh, not only does it have two different zonings, it also has two different character areas. Um, the properties on the northern half facing Pine Tree are established residential character area, and the properties facing Bay Tree are neighborhood activity center. Um, and as you can see on the map, it sort of paints a corridor. You see the bright pink, which is institutional, that is indicative of BSU properties, um, an area of strong influence by BSU. The Neighborhood Activity Center extends westward <laughs> along the north side of Bay Tree Road, um, and a little bit on the south end of Bay Tree once you get beyond um, or out closer to Jerry Jones. Established residential is exactly what it sounds like in the conference plan. It is to maintain residential character and allow zoning districts up through multifamily. So the applicant is eligible to request multifamily zoning within the established residential area. It's just the top of the ladder of what can be requested. Um, aerial map, this is from 2010. It shows um, different buildings in the area heavily forested. You see some of the surrounding land use pattern. Um, the single family neighborhood to the north and northwest. To the northeast, you see the rooftop of what used to be uh, what was the, uh, SL Mason Elementary School. It is now the Valdosta Early College Academy. Um, they're directly to the east along Bay Tree Road is a small apartment complex that we used to call Little Joe Court. It has now been acquired. Um, and then everything to the south is part of the campus of Valdosta State University. And this is sort of the land in between, and they're requesting multifamily to be developed here. Subject properties, this is some of the properties you see single family homes. Um, there's one house on the corner of Azalea and Bay Tree. This we call the Nichols House. Um, as some of the information I gave you, this property has now been nominated to our Historic Preservation Commission to be designated as a historic property. Um, that is not to be confused with the rezoning request. They're completely different processes. It is simply a request um, to place a layer of protection on this property, no different than if the property were in the local historic district. The local historic district is starting basically the Oak Street Corridor eastward and from one mile branch south, so it's really only a block and a half outside the district. That is a separate request that is going to be heard by the Historic Preservation Commission at their October meeting, um, and if they recommend approval of it, it will move forward to the City Council meeting um, at their mid-month meeting in October, um, and the City Council will make the decision. So what you have before you is a rezoning request to rezone all of this property to multifamily residential. Um, there's the survey that gives the different acreages of the two different zonings, and then the proposed site plan. Um, this is the revised site plan that we received on Friday afternoon and then emailed to you. Um, you have that in your packet. Um, that is currently the one that we are looking at. It is a conceptual site plan. 
please bear in mind that any development on this property, just like anywhere else, has to go through full plan review um, and development review processes. Um, there's a multitude of codes that must be met. Uh, one of the requirements in the code for requesting multifamily rezoning is they have to submit a conceptual uh, site plan and building elevations. I do not have a slide for the building elevations, but in your packet is a copy of what was submitted by the applicant. Um, it's very similar to some existing apartments that were developed by the applicant over on West Mary Street. However, staff is told that they are contemplating changing the architectural style of that to mimic that of Little Joe Court to the east. Um, this property is in the Bay Tree University Corridor Overlay District, which becomes very important as part of the review process for the site plan. Um, there are certain guidelines that must be met. Uh, most important of those are certain architectural standards. Um, and we talked about this at length at the work session. One of the concerns that staff raised about the proposed building design is it would need to be modified in order to meet those standards. Um, those modifications would not necessarily affect the site plan, but would certainly affect the appearance of the building walls. All right, let's walk through some of the things in your packet. We have all the mapping and basic information we went through. There's letters of authorization from all the property owners. There's a series of some emails, uh, letters that have been submitted by uh, concerned citizens and property owners uh, nearby and some not quite so nearby to the property. Uh, we'll not itemize those, but those are in your packet. Um, some of those started back at the, even the end of July. You may recall this was a request that was on your agenda one month ago uh, by the applicant who was requesting rezoning of seven of these eight parcels. You may recall that request was withdrawn and then a new request was submitted the next day for this month's cycle, and that's the request you have. But during that time, we've already started getting some input from the public, and so one of those letters is from that time. All right, at your stations this evening, I gave you some handouts. One looks like this. This is a map of the Bay Tree University Corridor Overlay District. Uh, some of you had contacted me and requested um, some little broader information about that corridor district and where it relates. If you look at this map, you see the shaded area along Bay Tree Road. Um, the corridor is divided into two subzones, one we call the University Zone, one we call the Market Zone. The Market Zone is that area to the west of the Norfolk Southern Railroad track out near the Valdosta Mall. Um, the plans for that are to be more commercial in nature. The University Zone is from the railroad track eastward toward BSU. Um, it actually stops at the subject property um, at Azalea Drive. Um, that is more of a transitional area to stair step down from the intensity of the mall to that more of the institutional character of the university. Um, the land use pattern is smaller lots, smaller development. Um, no longer residential in terms of single family, but we do have existing apartment complexes, some office buildings, and it is somewhat of a graduated scale as you move westward through the corridor out toward the university. Attached to that is the first page out of the supplemental regulations for the overlay district. And I call your attention to uh, section A, which is the purpose and the intent of the overlay district, and that should help put some things in perspective to you. Keep in mind, the only half of the subject property is in the overlay district, and those are the properties that face Bay Tree Road. Second item I gave you looks like this. Several pages stapled together. Um, you may recall there was a, a revised site plan that was submitted Friday that I emailed to you. We also emailed it out to the city departments for a cursory review um, to get their comments by midday today. Um, these are comments that I have received from the other departments. These are in addition to the comments that you already have in your packet, which were comments that were submitted as part of the regular review process. Um, comments here primarily from the engineering department, which refer you to the attachments. Um, one of the engineering technicians actually took their site plan and marked it up with comments and submitted it back for us to look at, and they gave some narrative. Most of the comments that you see here revolve around an existing sewer easement that runs east-west through the center of the property. Let's see if this laser pointer works. Right? I don't know if I'll work on that screen. 
Um, in your site plan, in your packet, you'll see the notation of an existing sewer easement. That sewer line serves the properties on both sides, uh, north and south of here. Um, that, at least for the applicant's perspective, has been somewhat of an obstacle in trying to arrange and orient these buildings on site. Um, the hard reality is you cannot place a building on top of a sewer easement. So one of the proposals is the applicant is now looking at is to reroute the sewer line um, so that it no longer runs through the center of the property, but instead may run along the side. Um, so without our departments having knowledge of that idea of the applicant, they have rendered the comments that you see before you because they have noted that these new buildings are now sitting on top of the sewer line. Um, that is something that will have to be addressed as part of plan review and a full set of engineering drawings to see if it will work. Um, there's six or seven feet of vertical elevation change from one end of the property to the other. Um, it is staff's belief that it probably would work <coughs> routing it around, maybe along Bay Tree Road, um, keeping in mind that even these properties will need to tie into a sewer line somewhere. Um, if that cannot be done, then they will be back to where they were before and having to orient their buildings around the sewer easement. So that's where most of these comments come from. Other items I've handed out are two. These were some letters that were submitted by email today. One is from Bridget McDonough, uh, who is an elderly resident who lives in the neighborhood to the north. And the other one is a letter that was submitted on behalf of the Property Owners Association of the neighborhood. And there's four pages of that letter. The first two is, I think, more the executive summary. The second two pages go into greater detail. Um, I had emailed these to you this afternoon, but not certain if you would get it in time, so I've given you some hard copies to look at. Um, in addition to that, there are several um, copies of petitions and letters. Um, those packets are about 25 pages each. I had emailed those to you as PDFs. Um, I think some of the neighborhood <coughs> folks may want to present that officially to you, but I've tried to give you some advanced copies of that, um, so in case you wanted to look at that before the meeting. Um, many different issues um, surrounding this property in your packet is a summary of how the concept drawings compare to development codes, at least in terms of the basic nuts and bolts of how you comply with uh, multifamily requirements. There are supplemental standards for multifamily, there are density limitations, setback limitations, and so forth. And all of those are articulated there for you. Um, keep in mind, this is a rezoning request. It is uh, approval of a land use. It is not approval of a site plan. So the site plan that is before you is conceptual in nature. It is not necessarily the final site plan that would be built. Um, they would be held to the limitations of RM zoning, plus any conditions of approval. What they have done and all that is required with the conceptual site plan is to demonstrate how the property might be developed under the proposed zone. In this case, it is a request for several buildings, each of them being three stories tall, four bedroom unit apartments, total of 45 units. Um, one of the issues that has been brought up by many of the neighbors and even some discussions with the applicant is that of parking. Um, as you see in your packet, the minimum parking standard is one parking space per bedroom. The proposed complex is 180 bedrooms, and they are proposing 180 parking spaces. And that does include a few handicapped spaces as well. As you look at the revised site plan, staff recognizes there's a few areas uh, of extra room that possibly could become more parking. Um, and actually that reminds me, Mr. Chairman, of one other comment on that review packet. Uh, fire department has concerns about the length of the parking lot drive aisles in two of the areas um, being a little bit too long for the fire truck to comfortably back up and turn. And that is something that would have to be addressed as part of plan review. Um, but that is a fire code requirement and there is no variance to that. Um, that is just something that has been noted. And the distances that are on the marked up copy of the engineer department show what those numbers are, where they're exceeding the maximum by just a few feet. Um, land use wise, cover this at length of the work session, and I'll close with this, Mr. Chairman. If you look at the zoning pattern, you see a mixture of residential and office professional that's already there. Uh, what's not evident or apparent on this map is you've got some intensive uses beyond residential. To the south, you have a large university campus 
um, much more intensive use of residential with existing multifamily directly to the east. You have the paternal organization of Long Bay Tree. And you also have the other institutional use, which is the Early College Academy, um, all bordering this property on two and a half sides. The other side is a single family neighborhood. So in staff's view, this is the land in between. Um, it is a general desire long term, staff believes, for multifamily or high density residential to be in closer proximity to the university campus as long as it is in an appropriate area. Um, we deem this to be close enough to the campus and given the surrounding land use pattern, uh, we have recommended approval of this. Um, although many, many things can be done with the site plan um, and there's many alternatives there. So with that, Mr. Chairman, staff has found the rezoning request and, uh, consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with our standards for exercise of zoning power, and we're recommending approval subject to a few conditions. <coughs> and there are three of those. The purpose of the conditions is to help mitigate the effect of uh, higher density residential development next to the single family neighborhood. The first condition, for multifamily development, combine all parcels of land into one lot. That is acknowledging the fact that RM zoning does, allows more than just multifamily. It also allows single family, it also allows duplexes. So the purpose of that condition is if they go the multifamily route to combine the properties together so you do not have property lines running afoul of the buildings. Number two, from Pine Tree Road, minimum setback shall be at least 30 feet for buildings greater than one story and 100 feet for buildings greater than two story. And the applicant's proposed site plan meets those setback distances. Number three, buffer yard landscaping shall include a minimum of three canopy trees, four understory trees, and 30 shrubs per 100 linear feet. Buffer yard shall maintain a minimum width of 20 feet. There shall be an unbroken six foot tall opaque solid fence or wall along the entire western boundary as well as the entire frontage area of Pine Tree Road. There shall be no vehicular or pedestrian access to Pine Tree Road. So in other words, separate this development from Pine Tree Road and the signal family neighborhood <coughs> beyond. With that, I'll, Mr. Chairman, I'll try and answer any questions you may have. All right, are there any questions for the staff? I got it. Mr. Wallace. On the uh, supplemental regulations, the LBR that you just been highlighted here. Yes, sir. Page five. Yeah, page five. The uh, you only have three conditions, but the reason that some of these conditions, like points of ingress and egress, you know, two points and stuff like that, is that because that's going to be taken care of in the plan review? Yes, sir. All of these items are required of the development. So I simply awesome. highlight ones that have been asked about, um, such as the architectural standards. Um, in the point of egress. That is triggered by the size of the parking lot. Um, some folks have questioned why there would need to be access at all to Isaiah Drive. Mm -hmm. And they're simply pointing out that they have a requirement to provide at least two points of access. Could those two points be on um, Bay Tree? They could be on Bay Tree, provided they meet spacing standards. Um, and that is something the engineering department would have to review. And it's not simply access spacing, um, but it's also distance from a traffic light intersection. Um, one of the ideas was to allow folks exiting the site um, rather than force them to make a left turn across Bay Tree Road to give them the option of using the traffic light at Azalea and Bay Tree to make a left turn. That's it. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions for the staff? If not, is there anyone in the audience 